this is Dr. Otto Janke with the New York Chiropractic Council podcast. Tonight, we have not only someone who is a fantastic mind and leader in chiropractic, she's a pretty cool lady, and she's a friend of mine, too. This is Dr. Amy Spolstra, all the way from... Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Coeur d'Alene! <laughs> Thank you. So excited to be here and back with this organization, and of course, talking with you, my friend, um, so, uh, just happy to be here and looking forward to this chat. Uh, a couple things. Let's run through some, uh, some of your highlights, uh, graduate from Sherman college of chiropractic. Why'd you choose Sherman? Oh, funny story. Um, so I learned about chiropractic when I was in college and undergrad and, um, a friend of mine's, I was, I was in school in Hawaii. I was like, let me get out of here. I'm originally from Michigan. I was like, let me get out of here. Where can I go? Let me go to Hawaii. <laughs> Broke my mom's heart. And um, I was, I uh, was like, I'm going to go play on the water polo team at University of Hawaii. <laughs> so that's where I was. And I met a friend. Why not? I know, why not? And I, I met a friend and she, her dad worked for um, one of the management companies in chiropractic. And he did like audio visual stuff for the big seminars. Um, they live in Texas and, and I was talking with them one day when I was visiting her family and he said, if I could do one thing, if I could start over and do one thing, I would be a chiropractor. And I was like, really? Like my brother saw a chiropractor for a neck injury in football practice when in high school, but like, I know nothing of this. I was like, why? And I was on a track to go to uh, law school. Cause I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll go to law school. And so, um, <laughs> I, literally I had no reason why I just was like, I don't I know. Said that'd be good He eh. said to do that. So I'm going to do it. And so he told me about innate intelligence and chiropractic and you know, how the body is you know, like made to heal. And it really aligned with what I innately just thought about the body and just knew and how I lived but had never formally been taught any of that. It just was like, just kind of the way. And um, uh, I just right then was like, well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a chiropractor. It was like the light bulb, you know? Sure. And so I went back, I actually transferred back to Michigan State and I was like, I, it, my identity changed. I was like, I, I ran out of money in Hawaii, first of all. So I came back to- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the truth comes out within yeah, the yeah. first two I minutes. I ran out of money there. Here's um, the reality of how I got into chiropractic. Yeah. I ran out of money over there. I was broke and so, I, mean, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna keep, keep going to school, but instead of business, I'm gonna go, I'm going to be pre-med at Michigan State. And so I just changed all my majors and I was like, I'm going to go to chiropractic school, but I'd still never met a chiropractor, never been adjusted, nothing. And so I got all dressed up and I started going to all these different chiropractic offices saying, can I volunteer for you? I'm going to be a chiropractor. I, you know, that's what I'm doing, but I've never been adjusted and I would love to get some experience. And also I'd love to get adjusted. <laughs> And they all turned me away. They were all like, you're nuts. And so I just kept going. And this one person, um, doctor, heard me talking to the office manager and said, come back here. And she sat me down and she kind of interviewed me like, why do you want to do this? And what, what's you know important about chiropractic? And her name, some of you might know, um, is Linda Rassel. She's, she was from Michigan. She's passed now. But um, she was kind of big in a lot of circles. And she was um, on the board at Life at the time. She hired me right on the spot. She took me under her wing. She's amazing. Wow. And she taught me about the green books. She taught me just, she taught me chiropractic and she was like, you have to go to life. <laughs> and so I went down there and it was right during the time of some, some, you know, accreditation issues and things. And so I was like, well, I can't <laughs> go there. I don't think. <laughs> and no. So um, at move. the time it was like, well, the next one that talks about philosophy is Sherman. And I know nothing about that. I haven't visited, but that's where I'm going to go yep. because they talk about innate intelligence. And so I went there and I'm so thankful that I did. So that was a long story, but I think a fun story. <laughs> um, Great story. So my chiropractic, you know, experience started from, I want to go to a place that's going to teach me about chiropractic. Right. Right. Uh, mine was uh, two sentences in a book in a library in Las Vegas, and it changed uh, everything for me. And it was uh, a path that has led me to almost 30 years later. Oh my um, so we're going to skip ahead um, a number of decades so that we, we can go back to a couple of decades previously. Um, you're the founder of Fo the FOCUS program and the neurodeflective retraining method. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, 
quickly just for a couple couple of minutes, what, what is the FOCUS program? So the FOCUS program um, is a multi-pillared approach with chiropractic being the foundation, um, a healthy, efficient nervous system being the foundation that is absolutely critical for any of the other things to work. People in our office know what is chiropractic, what is not chiropractic. We even have a separate waiting room for chiropractic and not chiropractic services. Um, and so the foundation, the first pillar is chiropractic. The second pillar is diet nutrition. The third pillar is what we call neurodeflective retraining. And the fourth pillar is brain-based mentoring and parenting. And it's a program that specifically works with individuals um, with behavioral learning, socialization challenges, traumatic brain injuries, chronic stress response, kids and adults. We do see a lot of kids, um, but actually, especially in the last couple of years, we've been seeing a lot of adults as well. Um, and so this program um, kind of comes together because my background before um, chiropractic was I was raised in a family with a brother with challenges. And my dad was a typical optometrist and he became a neuro optometrist. Um, or a developmental optometrist, that's the same thing. And they, those, those weird guys um, have a really similar um, actually background and philosophy as we do as chiropractors. And they're very misunderstood like we are as chiropractors. Um, and they look at the eyes and eye movements and they, they use that as a window into yep. the brain and yep. do things like vision therapy and syntonics and lenses and prisms and that stuff. So I grew up in that world. And then when I learned about chiropractic, I went, wait a minute, these worlds need to be together. And I knew that is what I'm here on this earth to do. It was like that second light bulb moment um, that happened for me at Sherman where I went like, the first one was like, oh, I'm supposed to be a chiropractor. And the second one was like, oh my gosh, I'm here on this earth to put these together to help these families who are struggling um, with behavioral learning, socialization challenges to be seen beyond their deficits, actually get to root root challenges and look at the function of the nervous system and how an individual is engaging and learning and connecting with their world. And I firmly believe that chiropractors need to be leading the way in this because we are the foundation that makes everything else they're doing more effective. So chiropractors don't have to do more in their practice. If you want to do some of the, like the neuroreflective right. retraining method and the eye movements and all of that, it's really cool. Primitive reflex integration, nutrition, really cool. Love it. Uh, most chiropractors need to be doing chiropractic really, really well yeah. and understand how to lead with the brain um, and know a little bit more about brain development, build relationships with other providers, be the quarterback or the team yeah. leader and recognize that all these other pieces may be important in addition to not us or them, but in addition to what we're doing chiropractically. Um, it's really, really important. And it was important before the pandemic. And now it's, ah. it's not just important, it's, it's vital. <clears throat> ah. It's absolutely critical that chiropractors step up and learn more about really what we're doing and how it impacts the brain and how we can help people with some of their biggest challenges that they're having, which is how are their kids, how are their ki kids and adults, but kids trajectory of life being impacted by chronic stress? Which um. is yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I want, I want to put this up here. <clears throat> Some of my, this is my first page of notes on you, but the bottom part says, uh, I was put on this earth to do this, do this work. And uh, you have that written all over your, um, your, your uh, different sites. And uh, you say it only about 35 times when you're speaking to you. So I know it's, I know it's tattooed uh, in your brain somewhere. Uh, yeah. I, I have to tell you that uh, in empire longevity, that, um, we talk about the mental, emotional, we talk about the uh, food, the rocket fuel and the motion, but always the foundation is, a, is an optimized nervous system because if that doesn't work, the rest of them doesn't either. And right. uh, it, it seems like it's uh, like we're outside some things, but no, this is, we're so straightforward. It's incredible. Um, so let's get back to, let's get back to that. So we, we jumped ahead to um, the focus. And so your, your, your big, why, what was your big, why? Cause there's, no possible way you went into college thinking you're going to be setting this up, did you? No. In fact, like I wanted nothing to do with any of it. Um, I, like I said, I went to Hawaii and was playing water polo and thought, let me, I guess I'll go to law school or something. <laughs> um, or something. Because my dad said I was pretty smart and pretty good at arguing. So maybe I should go to law school. <laughs> Literally, that's what he told me. Um, and so 
but I'm really thankful because both of my parents were like, go explore, um, get exposed to different thoughts and ideas and see what, what resonates with you and you'll, you'll figure it out. And I appreciate that. I think that's really good advice, but, um, what was the, what was, the, who was the person? What was the tip? Was it your dad that, that, that made you literally focus on doing this with kids? Cause uh, when I was at Palmer, we learned about some peds, but nothing, nothing like this. Well, no, I, I knew um, because in my family, my brother, who is like my best friend, we kind of grew up like twins for so really, really close in age. Um, and then we had some stress. Our parents were divorced and we had, you know, some, everybody has some life stresses, early life stresses. We had some in our family. And so we were really close and um, he had a lot of challenges. He had behavioral challenges. He had, you know, anger challenges. My house was the house with lots of holes in the wall. And um, he had learning challenges. His, his official diagnoses back then in the eighties was, you know, dyslexia and ADHD. Now he would have a few more letters on there as well. Sure. Sure. Defiance disorders and anxiety, stuff, sensory processing, certainly all of those. And so my brother struggled, which means I struggled, which means my whole family struggled, right? right. And so my dad, this my dad was a typical optometrist, and he, because seeing his own challenges with his son, went, wait a minute, like what is happening, and how can I help? Why can't I help my own child? And um, he changed the course of his career, and he became a neurooptometrist. He actually became a, a leader in that field, and and he was practicing, and he just you know, um, we learned about neurology and neurooptometry and vision therapy from a really young age. It was just part of our, you know, I always say there's like chiropractic kids. It's just part of their paradigm. Right. I was like a, a neuro kid, like a neurology kid. Like I just knew, I knew about neurology and about, you know, expressive and receptive language and Broca's and Renicki's area from like 10, it was inappropriate. Um, but, but I did. And so it was just a part of, um, my worldview. And right. so I never considered doing anything with that. I just was like, it's just kind of what I know. I don't want to be that. Um, but then as I started to have these light bulb moments, like first learning about chiropractic and going, that fits my paradigm, but yeah. that's something I never considered. And then literally going and sitting in first quarter um, at Sherman and learning, I remember taking a philosophy class and going, and then the second light bulb moment there was taking up learning about upper cervical neurology. And I was like, ding, 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 like these need to go together. I need to work. I need to bridge the gap between these professions. And I'm here. I must be here to do this work because why else would I be having one thing here? That's right. And one thing here. And, and, and so I just, I still didn't know how to do that. I didn't know what that would look like, but I just sat with that for years. And I started to go, well, I want, to, I better look, develop some skills and I better get really good at being a chiropractor. Right. Okay. That's the foundation. I better get really good at adjusting kids, uh, analyzing and adjusting kids for subluxation. Cause I know that's a really important foundational piece. And then I had my next light bulb moment. I'd already been in practice for a couple of years. And I went, oh, I remember where I was sitting when I had this moment. I went, oh, that's how I'm going to put these together into a program. Here's how I'm going to do that. And then we've just gone from there. And so it wasn't a, that, that finding that purpose wasn't like a one, one time thing. It was like this, this just each step along sure. the way as I was ready, it just went, okay, that's how I'm going to do that. And it's same for teaching this work. I never wanted to teach this work. I just wanted to keep my head down and practice yep. do the work. And that's what I've done for almost 14 years. And then I, and then I went, I you know, people are asking and, and I just keep going, well, I don't know. I could help more people if I can help more doctors and help them see how to bridge the gap and lead with the brain. And okay, I'm open to that. And, and that was never my intention, but then that's where we are. And so um, that's how that's all kind of come together. And, and quite, quite magnificently also. Uh, please uh, state what the uh, focus site is. Uh, gofocusacademy.com is the site. And so that's kind of, there's a lot of different things there, um, different programs and certification series is usually what people start when they want to 
you know, th this is about people who want to be chiropractors. They want to stay in the chiropractic lane, but they want to know more. Absolutely. Um, they want to have better communication procedures, understanding of what we actually do and mm -hmm. have procedures and exams and everything that, that back that up and then have, um, uh, alter or additional options in what we, we have the brain blossom program that they can do in a, you know, to, for at home exercises and things like that, that they don't have to then do in their office, but can be supportive to some of the people that may need it in addition to chiropractic. I would highly recommend all our docs uh, go to that, that site and uh, take a look at the videos. I mean, you have um, uh, videos that are just, I think, fantastic and uh, educational. Uh, someone who's been around the block a couple of times as myself, I learned. Uh, and there, uh, you have them in uh, uh, small sections, so it's not it's not 17 days. You're going to be doing this. You're going to be looking at this, going like, oh, I, I could take some of that and uh, bring it right into practice with me. Uh, absolutely love that. It's a, a fantastic job at that. Um, let's let's get into um, the neurodeflective uh, disorders. Uh, break that down. What does it mean? And um, what's it mean? Because those are big words. Yeah. So when we're talking about neurodeflective disorders we really want to, so there's neurodevelopmental disorders. That's typically right. what you hear. Behavioral, learning, socialization, developmental challenges, things like autism spectrum disorders, Tourette syndrome, ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, um, anxiety and behavioral disorders. These type of things come under that umbrella. They're really similar points on a similar spectrum and under kind of one umbrella. So the, so, the children can then also, Amy, they could also have different reasons why they have those different different things going on at any one time. Yes. So basically, um, typically in our typical, like in our mainstream system, the way, and this is why I don't use the word neurodevelopmental disorders very often. You'll notice I use neurodeflective, which I'll differentiate that um, in a minute. When we use the terms like neurodeflective disorders, we're really, we're really putting these kids in their deficits. We're saying, okay, well, we can, I'm not denying that these are um, uh, in existence. That's not what we're saying by using right. a different we're, we're using, we're framing this differently, right? We're looking through a different lens. We're saying, okay, so these kids, this child with autism, we can check these boxes. We can see these things. We fit in this category. Therefore you are. Well, when we just take a little bit of a deeper look there, we understand that, you know, um, yes, with these disorders, there are differences in the way that these individuals engage and connect and learn from their world, what to, based on the tools that they're using to process their world, and maybe some of the tools that they're not using well, which would lead to some of the challenges in learning or the differences in, in connection and engagement and socialization and all of this and communication. And so what we want to look at is we want to look at underlying function. How, how can we, one, reframe this to look at, okay, well, not just what is this kid doing in a peculiar way or not very well, or looking at them for their challenges or their deficits, but we want to look at them and go, okay, but, but what are they doing? How is this child right. who's right. hyperactive and touching everything? Like when we know that there are no purposeless behaviors, there's a reason for all behavior, why is Johnny touching everything? What is he doing in there, in fact? And what does that tell us about his trajectory of brain development? What, where he may have gaps in brain development, not just what his behaviors are telling us about how he's badly behaved, but how is he processing? When we do that, and then we know a little bit more about how to actually do a clinical exam. So we watch and wonder, we say, oh, interesting. Johnny needs to touch everything and move his body a lot to most efficiently process his world. Right. Let me do an exam and let me look at primitive reflexes. Let me look at gross motor and fine motor and eye movements. And can he time his claps to a metronome? Does he seem to have expressive and receptive language efficiently? How are his eye movements? Um, and then we team those observations and clinical findings together. And we do our chiropractic exam where we say, hey, are there indicators of input, processing, output challenges that may be impacting the way his brain is functioning processing and moving through development leading to some of these changes in the way he's processing his world is there a deflection in the way that he is processing his world which is leading to this behavior do we have a neuro deflective processing pattern that is leading to alterations in engagement learning and processing which then we can improve 
underlying neurological communication and function, input, processing, output, and monitor changes in functional brain-based exams to see and, and observe, do we have changes in behavior, learning, and engagement? That's how we know, hey, uh, as we're correcting subluxation, should we send home some vestibular games? Should we do have them doing gross motor activities after an adjustment? Should we have this child doing eye movement uh, exercises or work with a neurooptometrist as we're doing our chiropractic exam? When we know a little more and we can do these exams like I just laid out, to look beyond the deficit and trying to chase the symptom of why this kid is hyperactive and impulsive, right, right. but understand more, we become the, the team leader. And the results this kids get, this kid gets, are are much improved because we're not just trying to stop his behavior; we're trying to understand his behavior, his reason for processing in the way that he's processing, and help him become more efficient and know when is the right time to add other things in, and what are those other things? Because even the most principled chiropractors, you know, this is one of the things I see in the principled chiropractic realm. Hey, uh, I'm so glad you're here. Johnny is, you know, having this hyperactivity and your neighbor told you to come. Listen, mom, I don't treat hyperactivity. Okay, side note, correct. We don't treat hyperactivity. Um, I don't treat hyperactivity, just so you know. What I do is correct subluxation and we right. may see improvements with hyperactivity. Great, love it. But here's the thing, that chiropractor starts working. They see improvements. Yay, everybody's happy. What if they don't? What if Johnny's hyperactivity isn't getting better? There's some other changes going on maybe, but what if the, the, the hyperactivity isn't getting better? What happens? First of all, mom's like, oh, I don't know. And the chiropractor's like, yeah. I, don't, I don't do this. Okay, uh, maybe um, try this supplement. Uh, I learned at a seminar to do these eye exercises. See, we, the chiropractor starts losing the understanding of what they're doing to impact this kid because then they are starting to try, treat the symptoms and losing the understanding of where chiropractic fits in. This is why it's so important for us to know more and have exams and procedures that allow us to monitor, as we correct subluxation, monitor what is happening with the brain. Right. How is this child processing? How is that changing? What are things I should expect to see that are different? Maybe... I would expect to see that he would become more hyperactive at first. Right. Based on what I'm finding on the exam. So see, this is all really important for us to, to, to deliver great quality chiropractic. We have to know, just like you'd have to know that with a back pain patient, you know, you, you need to know, like, does it make sense that after I adjust you, you can't walk for three days or is that kind of a red flag, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So Amy, define for me what the deflection is itself. What's the... And is, is that, is that a protective, is that a prote protective mechanism in the brain or is that just the way that they, uh, that's the ex expression that they have for the input that they've got? So what we know about brain development is that the brain is not fully really developed at birth. We understand that, right? We all get that. The moms, people in your community, they know that like every, we all get this. We know that we have to move through this trajectory of development. Right. There is order. Um, in the way we move this through this trajectory. And there are different tools or skills that we gain, tools that we use to process our world at different stages. Like a little baby, right? A newborn baby has primitive reflexes. You do this to a newborn baby, they do this to find food. You and I have more sophisticated ways to find food based on where we are in development, how we've moved through development and the way we engage and connect to parts of our world. However, let's say that a stress response greater than our ability or a stress event, physical, chemical, emotional, whatever happened at different, at a stage in development, right? Right. We had an adaptation. Now we have something impacting the way the brain, that trajectory of development, the way the brain is moving through development at, let's say a time when we were developing at 18 to 32 months, when we're developing more stable binocular vision, let's say right? So eye movement. So the finest of the fine motor skills, we're developing these eye movements. Now I have this incongruency because I'm getting errors because stress response, postural distortion as a result of stress response. Now I'm not having stable eye movements or stable visual perception. 
things have changed. Now what I'm touching with my tactile senses and my proprioception of where my body is in space is not matching the input I'm getting in through my visual system. We have a mismatch. Stress response happened, response to stress happens, changes in visual perception, incongruency in proprioception and movement touch. You with me so far? This happens. Well, what am I going to do? What is this child going to do? Are they going to go, well, this isn't giving me very good input. I'm going to put my attention there. No. Right, right. They're going to go, this is giving me much more input. Right. This is giving me more efficient and consistently accurate input about what's happening outside of my body and in my body. So I'm going to put my processing eggs in this basket. I'm going to depend more on touching things and moving my body than using my eyes, right? And that guides us into that visual uh, cognition and then that changes our trajectory. It's, it's basically, then we see those neuroplastic changes that change the way we engage the world. So we have a deflection, we have a stress response, changes in neurometabolic system and potentially postural system, uh, or creating postural and movement distortion. And we have a deflection. Now we have a deflected way of processing our world, meaning just a deflection from typical trajectory. Right. So that's one example. Um, but we have to understand that when we can look at it from a, like go way back and find the simplicity on this, we go, listen, the brain develops in a certain order. We understand that stress in early life or stress during that development impacts the way the brain moves through development. And we just want to understand and what specifically can we gather from looking at the different tools we have at different stages of development and tie that into how an individual is having challenges with behavior, learning, and, and engagement. Yep. And then we can put these pieces together. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, fantastic. And by the way, for all the docs on here, once again, go to the, go to the, the website and take a look at it. And you're, you'll be like, oh, okay. Now, now I get it even more. Fantastic. Uh, so you see the child at that certain age. Uh, the first question is going to be, is can, you, can we then help the child to be better? And what's the progress we will see over months, years? Can we have someone uh, get to quote unquote a normal life or is normal life their level of normal? Yeah, um, I don't love the word normal because yep. who's normal? You're not normal. <laughs> I'm not you're normal. Not, you're not the first one to tell me that, normal. by the way. <laughs> me either. <laughs> um, Yes, of course. We know that the body, the brain, we, we are self-healing or we can move towards more organization. Absolutely. But not just by doing the same thing, right? That's right. like basic entropy. We're just going to do the opposite of that. And so we know that the brain can change at any age, but we have to create more efficiency. We have to look for, do we have communication issues? Do we have a subluxation that's altering input processing output? Is that subluxation there because primarily the subluxation happened first or was it a result of something else, right? Is it chronic? Um, and do we need to correct that? We need to start there. And then we can say, okay, great. So if we look at that trajectory, this is where neurodeflective retraining comes in. If we look at that trajectory of brain development, primitive reflexes, gross motor, fine motor, auditory verbal, eye movements, visual cognition. And we say, okay, this individual has subluxation they have a, a, a very inflamed system. We need to make some dietary and nutritional changes, calm the stress and inflammation yeah. down. Basically, I call those two pillars tilling the soil. Let's just till the soil and get this brain ready to change. Sometimes that's all we need to do, especially with younger kids, right? Sometimes that's the ticket right there. And the thing is there, the key is there, we need to be able to monitor, right? So we use that, what we call in focus, the functional brain-based exam, where we measure, just like we measure for subluxation and we have indicators to see if we have a subluxation, right? And we teach like, hey, you should probably be looking. It's not just like every person that walks in, you've got a subluxation. We should probably have some exams there to see. Yep. And then we should look at and how is, you know, you hear everybody saying like, hey, the correct subluxation and it, it, it changes the brain. Well, let's, let's actually 
look at some functional changes there too. And that's where we bring in just some basic measurement of um, primitive reflexes, gross motor, fine motor, all these things we just talked about, um, eye movements. And so we look at the functional brain-based exam and the chiropractic exam. We start correcting, you know, tilling the soil with chiropractic nutrition, and we monitor this, these functional brain-based changes. And a lot of times, like I said, especially for younger um, and, and all, we see a lot of movement, a lot of improvement, sometimes all the improvement we need in the functional brain uh, based category. And we start seeing the, the ways that individuals are processing their world, those, those deflections, those behaviors, those symptoms just sort of melt away as they gain more efficiency. Right. To process their world. So sometimes we need a little more, especially if you know we have an older child who's become very routinized in the way that they process their world um or an adult right it's like i like this example it's like listen i have a way that i drive from my house to the grocery store i go to i've got a way you know it's pegged i go that way i'm on autopilot i can be doing other things talking right. to my daughter listening to a podcast this is the way i go and i could go another way there are other ways i just don't go those ways it's very easy and efficient for me to go this way. Well, if there was construction, I would have to think a little bit and I would have to take a little more energy to go that way. Even right. if that way is more efficient. That's not the way I go. I go the way that was pegged. Yep. And so all we're doing is we're uh, taking away the construction in, with using our chiropractic and nutrition. We're taking away the construction. That doesn't mean that that's the way a, child, a person is going to start going. We then have to do some work to get them to go, hey, this is the more efficient way. We want you to use this pathway. That's where our primitive reflex integration exercises and gross motor and top-down visualization, all of that comes in. Hey, you've got this apparatus here that works a little more efficiently now. Let's use it a little differently, right? And so that's awesome. where that comes in. Neuroplasticity and adaptation machines, how much better could it be? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> again docs if you haven't been to the site already i mean during this talk you should go to that site uh and um make sure you just inhale the stuff deeply uh dr amy in our last couple minutes here because i kept you over um what's gonna be the dent you're gonna leave in the world what's uh when dr amy spolstra is no longer here what's the uh what's the dent she has left in the world well my daughter, obviously, um, oh. I have a daughter and, um, obviously we want our kids to be on our shoulders and do better than us. Um, and, and be better than us and do, you know, make a bigger impact in a bigger, you know, in whatever way that is. And so obviously that, but I feel that way for in the, in kind of the same way, um, for the, the doctors I work with, the people that I work with, the people that I come in contact with, the parents that I work with to, you know, to find brain-based strategies to help their kids. I mean, I just think we are at a really critical time in history. I think even before the pandemic, we, I, we were saying this, that, that we're, we're on a, are we gonna continue on this deflected way of how individuals learn and connect or don't connect right. um, in our world? I mean, it's like, what's gonna happen here? Which way are we going? And I, don't know the impact that I will have, but I can tell you that I will continue to work to yeah. have an, a positive impact in improving the expression of life um, and helping till the soil for these kids through their doctors and through our doctors and through me and through their parents to help them have the best expression of life possible. Um, because um, we're not on that path with education and with parenting and with behavioralism, that's not where we're at right now. Um, but I will do everything I can to make my impact to help as many providers and parents get that idea as possible. We can, we, uh, we can feel your light. We can feel the heat from the, uh, from the torch you carry and uh, being the beacon that you are. We totally appreciate that. Uh, one more time, Amy, what's the, uh, what's the, web, what's the website? It is gofocusacademy.com. And we also have a free Facebook group for chiropractors, um, which is called Focus 
on neurodeflective disorders for chiropractors. It's a little tricky one. Um, and so people can <laughs> join that. <laughs> I do. Uh, we do a lot of, we have a really nice community, over a thousand doctors in there, just um, tips and, you know, helping people with support right. on how to do good work for their communities. Uh, Dr. Amy Spolstra, I'm glad you're on our side. Thank you. Back at you. <laughs> Dr. Amy Spolstra, uh, once again, docs, you're on here. Uh, go to that site, uh, go to the Facebook page, become a uh, become a, a member there, and go to the site and watch the videos. Contact Amy. Learn more. If this is going to be something you want to learn more about, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, probably about for five years, as we've been measuring the nervous systems of of our adults and our kids, I've seen the uh, sympathetic drive go in massive, massive pegging in the sympathetic drive. It's been incredible. Uh, we've, we, and we've seen it for uh, five and a half years right now, and it's been incredible. Uh, I can't recommend that you follow up with Na Amy as much as possible and become a raving fan of hers. She is someone you should keep your eyes on and follow. Dr. Amy, appreciate your time, your expertise, and love of what you do. Thank you so much. So happy to be part of this community. Thank you.